There was a deceptive calm in Salisbury, capital of Rhodesia, on the day of UDI, the Declaration of Independence. Something had happened that was long expected, and the first reaction in business quarters, as well as among the ordinary people, was one of relief. The realists knew that the reckoning would come later. Hurriedly to number 10 came opposition leader Edward Heath and the liberal leader Joe Brimmer. They and most of their followers agreed that Mr. Wilson's attitude was the only one possible. The Foreign Minister Stewart, the Minister of Defence Dennis Healy and all other members of the government backed the Prime Minister to the hilt. Paymaster General George Wick, Commonwealth Relations Secretary Arthur Bottomley had accompanied the Premier to Rhodesia and now Mr. Wilson was going to the House of Commons. He had a sad but necessary duty to perform to declare UDI illegal. Outside Rhodesia House in the Strand, there were some hostile demonstrations during the day. Officials among themselves discussed the likely effects of the sanctions to be imposed by the British government. If any members of the public had clung to the belief that both sides were bluffing, they knew the stern truth now. Of tobacco, Rhodesia's greatest export, Britain will import no more until legal government is restored out there. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. For everybody in the gigantic industry, the moment of truth may not be now, but cannot be long postponed. Ian Smith may have been the prisoner of extremists. Legally, he is no longer in office. He disregarded Harold Wilson's sage advice, Prime Minister, think again.